Okay, Mr. Uh, Chairman, if you're uh, ready, uh, the, what we have here are two preliminary alternatives to the base case. Uh, we've not made alternatives to the high return portfolio, which was there was uh, some uh, reasonably uh, strong indication of a preference for. So I would not call what you're going to see completed work. Uh, what this will allow you to see is uh, with some different assumptions uh, what the changes are in return of, and volatility, and just to give a sense of the sensitivity of the of the of the changes to the numbers, um, they're not big. You know, with one percent moves up or down uh, to do this, so you wouldn't expect these portfolios to move a lot. But you recall, in the base case, you have a, a blended return of 7.57 and an expected volatility of 11.73. And then if you make the following adjustments, raise fixed income, real estate, and infrastructure and forest land by 1% each, uh, and then reduce inflation assets, uh, liquidity, and ARS by 1% each, the resulting portfolio would have a blended return of 7.63 uh, and a volatility, expected volatility of 11.79. Not you know, not a number that's so different that it would tell you that one portfolio is superior to another. Uh, we did get asked about the sensitivity of, of uh, ARS in particular, so we'll show the next one with ARS at 2%. So here we've kept fixed income where it was, uh, and then just raised real estate and infrastructure and forest land by 1% each, and uh, decreased uh, inflation assets and liquidity uh, by 1% and then left uh, ARS at 2, uh, and the return is 7.23, oh, excuse me, the uh, blended return 7.63, so it's almost the same as the uh, first portfolio, uh, and the volatility is uh, slightly higher at, by one basis point uh, at 11.8 versus 11.79. Uh, what we need to do is run this off the, uh, off the high return portfolio and then noodle it around as uh, staff and uh, just based on what we were doing over here, uh, it looks like it's the, you know, the standard investment office. You know, every, you got eight people in the room and 12 opinions about what to do. Uh, but fashion something to bring back uh, for a year, you know, year review, perhaps in December without, you know, we're going to make all the decisions uh, you know, concurrent in, uh, in February, but kind of say, well, this kind of looks like a portfolio that meets your preferences. Uh, and then get your reaction to that in, in, uh, in December. And, uh, you know, if we don't do it, then we have two months to, you know, come back and get a better answer. But right in the ballpark here, you have a, a portfolio which uh, uh, pretty much keeps us where we are, um, but does make important, and in my view, important adjustments with respect to realism about how big the private equity portfolio could be, a little more aggression with respect to reducing the liquidity target. Uh, and, uh, and preserving our option to see if uh, ARS can uh, help us diversify risk uh, cost effectively. Um, and uh, I don't know, invite uh, the rest of the uh, staff here to comment. I usually speak last, they, they say more, but. Uh, uh, I mean, the, 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 <laughs> you know, Joe, the, the main comment that needs to be made is that these portfolios, from a statistical perspective, are indistinguishable from each other. We shouldn't overinterpret any of these numbers when you're out at the second decimal place. It's beyond the ability to estimate any of you, this. You have a marginal information ratio that's over one. It's fantastic. <laughs> Let's just keep going. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, you know, again, I, I would absolutely caution people not to overinterpret the numbers and the specificity and the precision implied by this stuff. It's sort of, we'd probably be better off if we actually dropped off the second decimal place and maybe even the first decimal place, mm -hmm. <laughs> to be quite frank about it. So at this point, I mean, unless there are real questions or further comments, Mr. Jelensic? Well, one, I... I enjoy the investment office who deals with decision making and uncertainty working with the actuaries who we know are wrong <laughs> to reach a conclusion. Uh, but, you know, one of the things that got said earlier today has been somewhat troubling me, so I want to at least throw it out there. Um, there's discussion of making all of these decisions, the economic decisions, the experience, 
the demographic decisions, the actuarial decisions, the asset allocation decisions at one time. So we see them as a total package. And there's something to be said for that. Um, on the other hand, each of those decisions can impact the discount rate, to, at least at the margin. And by doing them sequentially, we have the ability to adjust the discount rate in small increments sequentially rather than waiting and do it all at one big, all together where it will have a bigger impact unless they offset, uh, which actually will add to the volatility of the rates, which you know the panel today told us we don't want the volatility rates. Um, of course, we don't want 50% rates either, uh, even if they are stable. So, but I, I think that's something we need to think about um, just as we go forward. Sure. sure. Uh, uh, you know, we're, we're staff with a strategic goal of integrating, so we're trying to make it concurrent. Um, but there are arguments for, uh, for a different approach, but the goal has been integrate, so that's what you see us uh, driving towards. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think I would just make a comment that even if we integrate all of these elements together, we can make very small changes on the margin, basically, and you can see the effects of those things. I think when you separate it, you run the risk of, you could make potentially a small change that could actually have a possibly a bigger impact, you know, due to the a sort of unforeseen linkage that exists. So I, I, anyway, I believe that's the intent of trying to integrate all this work together so that you can actually see all of the moving parts regardless of which dial you're twisting, you know, in, in the guidance that you provide to staff. I'd, I'd suggest we have a concurrent integrated sequential process. <laughs> <laughs> that must have come from a statistician. Yes, indeed. Are there any other comments? Alan, would you make any comments at this point? Do you have what you need? Uh, no, I think I mostly second what Joe said is that we are working at working on an integrated um, asset liability management process um, and it makes sense to me that all of the decisions should come come at the same time. But very important to that process is that we get your input ahead of the process so we can at least get close. Because if we can get close, then you can make all of the decisions at the same time. It might be some tweaking, but we, we should be able to do that. If we're not close enough, then there'd be too, much, too many moving parts at the, at, in the final, at the final stage, and we would actually probably not be able to make a decision. So getting your, in, your input in advance, I think, is extremely important to us in order to make this work. Um, and hopefully that's what we've gotten today. Cheryl, would you have any comments that you'd care to make? Well, I just want to say this is actually my first ALM workshop. I started uh, my first year anniversary is actually this Friday. So this, is, uh, this has been uh, very helpful for me and, and working very closely with uh, Eric and, and uh, Alan and, and the staff from both the INVO and the ACTO offices. And uh, I just, I just want to, again, thank everyone's participation. I thought the panel discussion really added uh, a lot of uh, helpful insight uh, to the discussion. And I think the information and, and a lot of the back and forth questions and discussion that happened over the last two days has been very helpful for us so that we can go back and continue to work on what we believe um, when we come back in, in um, December and, and in February for the decision by the board will be very helpful in helping us to, uh, to support those decisions. Thank you. Great. I, I think, Mr. Jones, if there's no yeah. other comments or questions, we're... Okay, well, no. We've seeing, got what we need. Seeing no other request to speak, uh, the, that uh, concludes our ALM workshop. And again, I want to thank my fellow board members and all of the staff and consultants uh, who participated. I also want to thank our stakeholder panel for their time and feedback on these important issues. The CalPERS Board of Administration will have its regular scheduled meeting next week in the CalPERS Auditorium. The December board meeting is scheduled for December 16th through 18th, and it will, will not... <laughs> <laughs> will not be have recommendations on these uh, items that we discussed during the workshop, and that will be forthcoming in February. 
And we hope to see you all in the next few months as we continue to finish this process. So thank you all again. And that concludes the workshop. Thank you. Okay. How about another big hand for staff? <laughs>